Welcome everyone. Today we are going to measure the circumference of the Earth from scratch. We've known that the Earth is round for millennia now. Aristotle, back in the 3rd or 4th century BC, was watching a lunar eclipse, and during the partial phase, he was looking at the shadow as it crept across the face of the moon, and he noted that that's Earth's shadow and it's curved, which means that Earth must also be curved. However, for another century, we didn't have any idea just how big Earth was or how far around it was until Aristosthenes, about a century after Aristotle. We're going to repeat his technique here today. Now, this is going to this measurement is historically tied to the summer solstice. All right, bit too windy outside, so we're back indoors, and I'm going to walk through the technique that Aristosthenes used. Here's a circle for the Earth, and we see the equator marked. Nothing in this diagram is going to be to scale. This is all approximate just to get the very basic idea across. The astronomical definition of noon is that it's when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky for the day. What Aristosthenes did is he took advantage of the fact that he and all navigators of his day knew that if you traveled to the Tropic of Cancer, which is roughly 23 and a half degrees north of the equator, at exactly noon on the summer solstice, the sun would be directly overhead. So its altitude would be 90 degrees above the horizon. When the sun is directly overhead like that, it doesn't cast any shadows because the light is shining directly down. But Aristosthenes didn't live near the Tropic of Cancer. He was way, way north of there, and he knew that there definitely were shadows at noon on the day of the summer solstice where he lived up in northern Egypt. And this does two things. First of all, it provides a second line of evidence showing that the Earth is curved rather than flat. And second, Aristosthenes did some geometry, which I'm going to skip the fine details of. And what he realized was that if you take the difference between these two altitudes, the angle that you get is the same as this angle right here. Now, why is that important? Watch this. We're going to set up a very basic proportion by comparing the part of the circle that we know to the entire circle. The angle between the two green lines is part of the circle, and we know that 360 degrees is what it takes to make the entire circle. The part of the circle that lies between the two green lines represents the distance from the Tropic of Cancer up to our observing location. Again, we can compare that part of the circle to the entire circle, which is the circumference of the Earth. By doing so, we get this basic proportion. So there are four pieces of the proportion. If we know any three, we can solve and figure out what the fourth one is. But let's go back outside. It's going to be exactly local noon on the summer solstice, and we're going to measure the altitude of the sun so we can find the difference between these two angles. A little bit of a blustery day here on the summer solstice, but I have my apparatus set up. My exact measurement time is going to be 12, 59, and 51 seconds. So let me show you how this setup goes. I just have a scrap piece of wood from the garage. I've used some coins and some scrap wood to prop it up. And the bubble level, uh, the bull yeah, the bullseye level, tells me that I am exactly level, or about as close as I can get to it. And what I'm going to do for my measurement here is you can set up a dowel, but instead I'm just using my carpenter's level because I know exactly the height. And what I need to do is at the assigned moment, I'm going to take the measurement from here at the very base, and I'm going to measure the corresponding tip of the shadow right here. And that's how I'm going to do, I'm going to get my measurements for the math on calculating the circumference of the Earth. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. There we have it. I've gone ahead and connected the dots. So I just need to measure my length. I'm going to try and do that here one-handed and hope that this guy will stay focused. I'm using the side of my ruler that goes down to 30 seconds of an inch. 
and how about that? We are right between 23 and 24, 30 seconds. So we'll call that 47 64ths, two inches and 47 64ths. We'll convert that to metric once we get inside and do the rest of our calculations from there. We actually don't need to convert to metric, but I'll show you why in a second. First, let's get a basic sketch of our apparatus. We've got the board that is nice and flat. We have the carpenter's square going up and down. We see the sun in the sky, and this line represents the angle and the shadow being cast on the ground. Our goal is to measure the altitude of the sun, which is how many degrees above the horizon it is, and that's denoted by this angle theta right here. To calculate that angle is actually very straightforward. We're going back to old high school trigonometry. We're going to use tangent. Remember that the tangent of any angle is the length of the side opposite divided by the length of the side adjacent. So this is where we plug in our measurements. The side opposite is the height of our carpenter square, which is 12 inches. The adjacent leg is the length of the shadow, which is 2.7344 inches. The reason you don't need to convert to metric is because this is a ratio. Inches divided by inches cancels, so no conversion necessary. And from here, we simply do the math. I'm not going to talk you through it. I'll just show it right here. And you can see the math shows that the sun was 77.1635 degrees above the horizon at the exact moment of local noon where I live. Let's take that measurement and head back to our proportion and put it to use. Remember that our proportion calls for the difference between the sun's altitude at the two different locations. So that means the difference is actually going to be 90 minus what we just calculated, which gives us 12.8365. Plug that in, and now we need to know the distance between our two observing locations. I use the NOAA latitude longitude calculator. It does a great job. Simply put in your coordinates for your observing location, and then for the second location, reuse your longitude, but we want the Tropic of Cancer as our latitude. So 23.5 goes here. Make sure you select kilometers from the drop down menu, hit compute, and the result is 1,520 kilometers for me. We take that back to our proportion, plug it in, we get the equation here. The circumference of Earth is what we're trying to find, so let's just put an X in there. We now have a complete proportion. I'm going to assume that you guys know how to solve this little cross multiply and divide. And the end result is that according to my measurements, the circumference of the Earth is 42,628 kilometers. The actual value is 40,075 kilometers. To be totally honest, I'm really not that thrilled with my measurements having about six and a half percent error. I was really hoping to do a whole lot better than that. But as I'm thinking through what are the different places where some air could have been introduced to this, I know my board was not absolutely perfectly level. So there's a little bit there. If my carpenter square was not absolutely perfectly perpendicular, there's another source of air, plus the markings with the pencil by a little bit. I ran the numbers, I did the math in reverse and found out that my measurement was off by about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So you add those three things up and that's probably going to get me relatively close to 3 sixteenths of an inch difference with what I should have gotten. Again, not thrilled, but I'll try it again next year and hopefully do a little bit better. If you guys enjoy this technique, give it a try for yourself. This technique is also what we're going to use for measuring the tilt of the Earth in a future video. Uh, the tilt of the Earth depends on the measurement taken on the summer solstice and the winter solstice specifically. So please subscribe to the channel so you can get that episode when it comes in this winter. Thank you guys for joining me. See you next time.